So here, this unloader is not working unless we have more than 500 silicon in our core and it's controlled by this microprocessor. So if we add more than 500, it'll start to work. If it's less than 500, it stops working. So why do I want that to happen? Well, I don't want my alloy smelter to use all my silicon till it goes to zero. So this sort of made kind of sense. And you can use this tutorial for other things like connecting unloaders with vaults or unloaders with a silicon crucible. There's so many things we can do. So just use this as a working example and then go find out what you can do with it. Now the first example, we're just gonna turn the unloader off. So we have selected it and we're going to add a control. And you can change what type of controls you can do, but for now we're just gonna talk about enabled. So if we enable of unloader one, because that's what it's called, so unloader one, and we're gonna set it to zero. Zero means it would turn off. If we set it to one, it would turn on. So we'll set it to zero and it's turned off. So now let's turn it off then on. We'll just copy it and turn it to one. Now the processor does a line by line. So the processor is first gonna turn it off and then it goes to the second line and turn it on. Once it reaches the bottom, it jumps back to the top. So it's going to do off, then on, jump to the top, off, then on. So you can see it turning off, then on. Now, depending what processor you're using, it's going to do this at different speeds. So the logic will do this faster and the hyper will do this almost instantaneously. So for an example, let's unlink this and we will now use the logic. It already has off, then on inside it. We connect it up and you can see it's turning off and on more faster as we're getting more silicon coming out. If we use the hyper, as I said, it's almost instant. You can actually tell that it's turning off and on. It's just doing it so fast. So we're gonna start from scratch. We're gonna connect up our unloader, obviously, because we're gonna turn it off and on. But we also have to connect up the core because we need to find out how much silicon is inside the core. So at some point we need to sense this. Now, let's add on and off first. So we go to control, enable unloader one to zero. So that's turning it off and just exactly the same to on. Now the next step, I said we need to sense if there's 500, well, more than 500 silicon in the core. So we need a sensor. We'll just drag this up to the top. Remove this because it doesn't matter for now. Copper, no, we need silicon in nucleus one. So this is just the name we're calling this line. So we can call this anything we want, but I'll call it bananas for now until we start to understand how it works. Now I'm going to add a jump. Now this is a bit fast for everyone, but it'll make sense once we add it together. So if bananas is more than 500, so how does that read? If bananas, which is silicon in the nucleus. So if silicon in the nucleus is more than 500, we want to turn it on, don't we? So let's turn it on. And as we found out last time, the processor is going to be doing line by line. So how does it work at the moment? So it's just learning the sensor, so it's not going to be doing anything. It just knows this now. But if the silicon in the nucleus is more than 500, is going to jump this line and just go to one. So it's going to turn it on. So at the moment we've got more than 500 silicon in our nucleus. It's just gonna be going, jumping over here, up to the top and then going here, jump to the top. So it's gonna be staying on. But what happens if we had under 500 silicon? 
is going to go to this line. It's not going to jump because we've got less. It's going to go to the line below. It's then going to turn it off, which we want. But then it's going to turn it back on again and go back on to the top. So it's never actually going to turn off. As you can see, we've got under 500 silicon. So this should actually turn off. So how do we fix this? What we need is to stop the, uh, the processor here and make it go back to the top. So we do that by just adding an end. So now how does it read? If silicon in the nucleus is less than 500, it's going to turn it off and then end here. An end means it goes back up to the top. So when it's got less than 500, it's gonna keep on rotating here. If it's got more than 500, it's going to jump over that and then turn on and then go back to the top. So as we can see, there's not more than 500, so it's not on. As soon as it gets to this 500, it turns on. So there is so much more we can do with Logic. For example, this one on loader to feed the alloy smelter. In the next couple of videos, I'll start covering this stuff. But for now, take care. Hope that helps. Ask any questions in the comments and I'll sort it out for you. Catch you later.